morning, uh, about 6 a.m. Starting today, so I think we'll uh, bring you guys along. <laughs> First we'll start pushing up the feed. I will feed these calves their pellets. Um, basically, they get the same feed that the last group in the other barn gets. And then that way, when they come into this barn, it's, uh, they don't, they're already used to the feed that they're eating. So that way it's a more smooth transition. So we just make sure they're all getting up and going to eat. So. Uh, just putting a list together of cows that we need to uh, fetch for the robot and then any cows that need special attention we got a couple to get dried off today and then we'll sort out anything that needs bread and pretty much any cow that still needs milk uh, put in I gave that list to my dad and Mason and they'll go ahead and gather them cows up and then um, I'll go ahead and get started feeding. Uh, first we'll feed the uh, milking cows. I know we'll start with those.
first batch today fed. Now we go and get all the cows up from the water beds and um, clean their stalls off while they eat. And then we'll uh, start feeding dry cows. Wake up. Hey. Wake up. Come on. Hey, wake up. Come on. Pull out all the manure at the end of the bed, and then we put clean dip bedding back over top, and then we'll put a little bit of hydrated lime on to hamper bacteria growth, and then the automatic scraper will take everything from there and take it out of the barn. So while I was working on the front here, Mason's working on the back. about uh, 228 stalls we clean twice a day. Next we'll uh, feed the dry cows here. Uh, they get a little different diet. So we gotta feed them separate. They got a little bit left so we'll probably feed a little less than yesterday. We got 
the dry cows fed now. Now we're well, just morning we got we have to feed the heifers yet, so we'll drive over there and see how much feed they got left so we know what to feed. fed, we got the dry cows fed, and look, there's one more batch to feed, milk and cows, we'll get a second batch, but all these, the dry cows and the heifers here should be good till tomorrow morning. Now it's uh, coffee time. Oops. Well look who beat me to changing the milk filter. No, 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 keep it going. I'll go drink my coffee. <laughs> Now the most important part mm -hmm. of a dairy farmer's day. You want to plug in that breeding? We, uh, no, that's not it. Oh, okay. See? We got to see if Eric got a new video. <laughs> what are you drinking? Drinking some mud. Uh, Do people ever give you a hard time? That's how you get at revenue. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm in the nice. right now. We store all of our Hi, Eric. In the got a load of sawdust to show up. We'll get that unloaded. Built the barn bigger. Story of my life, but we'll push it in with the loader. You want to be on YouTube? <laughs> Just real quick, what we're working with here is uh, all sawdust, and it, I mean it literally is dust. And all we use it for bedding, we put it on the cow's beds and it absorbs any moisture. Um, that and it's cushiony. Uh, stuff actually comes from like a furniture place, so uh, they must. 
to sweep the floors and all. It's a waste product, so we're not like cutting down trees to uh, bed cow beds. Um, they made furniture out of that wood. This is trash to them, so uh, good use for us. And we use the sawdusted bedding versus like sand. Uh, sand's real good for the cows, but uh, this works for us. And basically, uh, in my opinion, the sawdust makes for a better manure where I think sand kind of takes the quality of the manure down. Because uh, essentially this is organic matter, carbon, and you want carbon in your in your dirt and the carbon will uh, all raise the organic matter in your dirt, which essentially uh, is better for, better for the dirt. It grows better crops, holds moisture better, uh, absorbs moisture better. Uh, that's all, all good. So. Got most of it shoved inside, now we just gotta clean up the edges. One of our robots, we got a little problem. I'll show you here real quick. Um, basically what I got pulled up here is the failures per robot in the last 24 hours and you can tell this is robot number one right here and she's averaging about 1.29 failures a day and only one to, in the last 24 hours uh, robot three didn't have any yet today and it's averaging about 1.29 robot four uh, two today, an average of 2.86, and then there's robot two, um, which today failed seven cows and is an averaging of 3.57. So that one's creeping up. Uh, so we're gonna look into that a little bit. Uh, but before we do, I got another one I can pull up. It is our failed milkings list? This will show us the failed milkings here in the last 24 hours. And so I can sort that on uh, which robot, and there you'll see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this thing says we got eight filled milk in the last 24 hours. And then we can kind of go over here and see why. And there's a connection attempts, automatic robot stop, teeth not found, dead milk time, connection attempts, connection time, dead milk time, and another connection time. So a uh, little bit of everything, nothing specific. So let's go look at it and see if we can uh, see anything while it's trying to milk a cow. Well, I don't see anything too exciting. But we'll probably um, go ahead and clean that camera, 3D camera up top. I was looking at that and that looks a little dirty. So the 3D camera being dirty would pretty well throw off the arm and it wouldn't quite know where to be. That would make sense that it's got all those different kinds of failures. So we'll get some paper here and we'll get it cleaned up. looks a lot better but that's a problem too so we'll look into that it shouldn't have that much movement I went ahead and grabbed myself some robot specialty tools so <laughs> there they are that's not supposed to be moving that will cause trouble so. Hopefully that will take care of our failure, uh, higher failure rate on that robot. So we'll make sure this other one's tight. Yeah, that one's tight. Before we head 
now it look, looks like the uh, barrel of teat dips getting low. Well, we got one new one and tipped up the other one and we'll let that one suck it all the way dry. Uh, pretty much it's just an iodine based product and when the robot's done milking it will spray that on the, on the teeth. So I think uh, ready to get out of here for the morning. Alright, so we're uh, on our way to get some parts. Purchased a new piece of equipment and uh, we had it inspected by a certified dealer. So we're going to get some of these parts and we'll be working on it soon enough since, um, oh, probably going to need it in another month or so. So um, that's what we're doing now. The only problem is we're, we don't really, uh, there, there's, we're not, we don't really farm in dairy country, so to speak. So anything uh, parts related that uh, has to do with the cows, you're going to end up driving a little bit. So we got about an hour and 40 minute road trip here, uh, one way, so we'll uh, get that parts. And Somebody. Well, I got my parts. Um, while we're here, though, it came this far. Might as well see what all they got going on. Never been here before. A lot of blue stuff. Right up my alley. like any of that blue stuff. Pretty big red dealer right around the corner. Leaving our second destination. Time to go home. I think we ran really out of room to put stuff in the truck anyway. So, in at home. No place like it. Um, we'll get all these parts unloaded here. Well, there's a pile of parts. 
for uh, new to us piece of equipment and show you what they all go to here probably in the next video so stay tuned it's about 6 6 p.m. here now and I think uh, we'll go check on the guys and see how they're coming along with evening chores see if they need any help and uh, and that'll be it for today so thanks for watching if you uh, like the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already